So in this video, we're going to go over how to build a sword. So these swords are going to be legal to use at well, Fednair Freestyle Sword Fighting Club of Vancouver Island, as well as uh, Medieval Chaos, which is a LARP in uh, Duncan, British Columbia. The, uh, the weapon specifications or the safety standards that we use are all laid out in the Medieval Chaos Handbook. Uh, to get a hold of this handbook, you go to www.medievalchaos.ca, you click on Game Info, then you click on Rule Books and Miscellaneous, and then you just download the handbook, and it is in the Combat and Equipment section. So this is the first sword that we're going to try and re rebuild today, or uh, replicate, and we're going to use this 3 8 fiberglass core, which is the... Uh, a lot of people prefer this one because you get a thinner blade profile, a nicer looking sword. But uh, it's also the most dangerous on account of these ends are so skinny. So what we're going to do to try and uh, account for that is take this 3 8 end and widen it out to one end with, or to one inch with the uh, end of a trekking pole. So that's, uh, that's got a steel backing on the underside of it. It's not just rubber. And we'll tape this into place and that then makes it a lot harder to have that push through the end of your sword and injure another player. Um, so to begin with, this is our Kalamazil novice sword, four and a half years old. Uh, good soldier, but uh, packed it in the other day. So we're going to start with this as our example. And then we're going to reference the uh, Medieval Chaos foam depths and uh, thrusting tips. There's quite a few of our people uh, also uh, fight down there, so we just sync up our weapons building. So we're going to go with a sword that is from end to end, 36 and a quarter inches which falls under the classification of medium. So we need one inch of foam. Oh, we, need three quarter, we need three quarters of an inch of foam on our striking edge and a one and a half inch thrusting tip. So that's what we'll shoot for. So we're gonna take our 36 and a quarter, we'll round it down to 36, and we need to cut our rod to that length. So we come out to 36 inches, and then we got an inch and a half of thrusting tip on there. So we'll get this rod cut to its specific length to be the main structure of this sword, and then we'll get to uh, cutting some foam and taping things up. So while John's building his sword, I'm going to build another one where the core is made out of PVC. So according to the Medieval Chaos book, uh, the minimum type of PVC is Schedule 40. That is the thickness of the plastic. Um, schedule 20 is just way too thin to use on a sword. You use that, it's just going to break. So the minimum is Schedule 40. You can also go up to ske Schedule 80, but that's just a really thick type of a heavy sword. Uh, so I've got here a nice piece of Schedule 40 PVC. Uh, again, I'm going to cut it to the length. I'm just going to be making a regular sword. Now, I'm just going to quickly go over the reason why we have to cap things. So if you see the plastic here, it's pretty thin. If I was to just put this onto uh, a piece of foam and thrust that into somebody, uh, this plastic is just going to go through the foam and it is going to go into the player and injure the player. So what we need to do is we need to cap it. Now there are various different ways of capping it, but the way that we normally do it is there are these caps for PVC pipe. So you just take it, you put it on. I'm probably going to glue this thing on there and uh, of course pad it up a little bit more. But that is to cap it, because if I was to have foam on this, it's really difficult to have a capped weapon that goes through foam. So I'm going to cap it, I'm going to cut this to length, and, uh, and then we'll go over again uh, foaming it up and taping it up. Give it a... Give them a little half a twist, it sets the glue in good. Yep. Just just a half or a quarter skid. Nice. Oh, Alright, so we're cutting the fiberglass off. You want to mask up 
you want to not be where it's, uh, you want to get into some ventilation because you don't want to be breathing fiberglass dust. You want to take your time and work your way around the outside of these because they, uh, if you just try to cut straight through, you'll get to the far side and it's going to break off and want to splinter out. So we've scored that all the way around now with the hacksaw and we can just go ahead and take the core out without the side blowing off and giving us a nasty splinter there. So come on over. Gluing things to fiberglass isn't the easiest, so we just go ahead and tape this on. It's a pretty secure end anyways. So we just get that on there. And our fiber tape up over top. and tight. Try and keep your tape as smooth as possible. It's going to wrinkle up a little bit on you. And we try to go all the way around. So see how we got one side there that's still open. We'll, we'll catch that up with our last piece right here. Once we got our end attached like that, because we're not working with quite as clean of an end as, as uh, the other sword, we get in here and we just put a nice collar around this so everything's nice and bound together and not being able to get off of that end very easily at all. Now we got a good end put our foam edges on here next and our thrusting tip out on the end we'll be good to go all right so we are going to be now doing the blades of the sword the blades are going to be made of closed cell foam that is the same foam that is used on the floor mats the nice uh, foam floor matting that we use you can pick these up at any hardware store um, so what we want to have is I'm going to be doing uh, two blades one on each side of the sword um, now when I measure the cap it is just one eighth from the core. So what I'm gonna do is the blade that I'm gonna cut is gonna be one inch and one eighth. Because what I'm gonna do is at the tip here, I'm gonna cut out that one eighth part. So when I measure here from the, the core to the blade, it is uh, an inch and one eighth. But because I cut out one eighth of this wedge here, this part here is gonna be exactly one inch, which it is. And I'm just gonna mimic that on each side. Now from the tip here, I do uh, our thrusting tip, it has to be at least an inch and a half. Uh, so from uh, here to the end is exactly one and a half inches. All right, so what I've done with the PVC is I have marked where my handle is gonna be. What I did was I took just an old handle from a Kalamazoo weapon. I just laid it down here. I did want to have a little bit of extra uh, space, so I just marked off where my handle is going to be, just like so. Now the pieces that I cut out, they don't uh, line up there, so I did just put some extra pieces just to uh, to match up there, like so. And I'm just going to put those all together. So this is our fiberglass core sword. So as you can see, it is the exact same 
cut out with our inch and a half past the thrusting tip goes all the way down we have marked off our handle which is right here and we had our little extra piece right there okay so we got our core middle of the blade pieces here and we're measuring up for our, our side pieces which are a little bit uh, less dense foam so we're looking at three inches there shade under three there and three inches there so we'll make these ones three inches by 26 and a half so three by 26.5 and then the heavier core sword it's a shade under three and a half three and a half and a shade over three and a half so we'll call that one three and a half inches by 29 and a quarter Write it down, measure it once instead of twice. <laughs> All right, we're putting our thrusting tips together. We're gonna use these guys. This is the uh, size of the end of our core, so that's the size that will make the end of the, uh, the thrusting tip, so everything jives up. We get a little bit less than half an inch. Just a whisker under half an inch out of each one of those, and we need an inch and a half, so we're going to go with four of them and have a little bit extra in there for some tape protection. So we just take our top, throw it down, mark it out. Making our way down the line. So we got our stack now, That's uh, we need an inch and a half and we're coming up at uh, an inch and seven eighths. So what you want to make sure when you're, when you're, especially with your thrusting tip, but the whole blade really is that when you tape it, you don't compress it down and just make it into a rock, right? Because that's still legal, but this is a little stone now, where if it's out here where it needs to be, it's got good compression. So... We get our stack nice and straightened up. Then we just take fiber tape and we keep everything nice and soft. Try and keep it as uh, in line as you can. I know it's it's tricky, especially on the first piece, just like that. Try and try and make sure you, you're not compressing it more than just a little. So that's the start, and then we just keep doing that all the way around until these don't have a way to sneak out the side. That's why it's important to not be pulling when you pull these to put these down just get it everything nicely lined up and just lay that tape on there because it's gonna the just the, the cocooning of the tape is gonna solidify the piece up as much as you need you don't need to get any compression in there to help it out at all and you do want to use a fair amount of fiber tape because your your thrusting tip takes not only a, a lot of energy in with the actual thrust, but it quite often gets hit. Uh, if you miss with with uh, the core of your sword, you're still catching with this end piece. So you want it to be a pretty solid piece of equipment. And that's the conundrum is that it needs to be solid and well built, but it also needs to still have compression so that you're not uh, hitting people with a little 
piece of rock that you built out of tape and foam. Okay, <laughs> so now we've got our stack there. Still got really good compression to it. Take one last piece, just angle it, just bind all the sides together. It seems it see it might seem like a bit overkill for day one, but once the sword's got some time on it, you don't want it to be uh, wearing out too quickly. So that little wrap there will help that whole piece keep its integrity after it gets smashed around. So that's what we're starting with. Now we're gonna put some double-sided carpet tape down here, get this into place out here, and get our edges down the sides and start putting everything together. All right, so I have here uh, double-sided tape. Uh, this is, a, well, it's, uh, the best one that we found is the carpet tape, um, is the best kind. So we have here, I've already pre-cut it. It measures from the tip to where my handle's gonna be. I'm just going to lay it on here, like so. And make sure it goes around nice. Like that. And I got a second piece already cut. Alright, so I got the double-sided hot or double-sided carpet tape on the whole blade. Now the other thing I have to do is just take a little patch of double-sided tape and put it onto the thrusting tip where the cap is going to go, or where my, my discs are going to go. Alright, so I have now the, the double-sided sticky tape on the top. I have my, my stack of discs. That's just going to go right on top like so. Give it a good push. There you go. It's nice and stuck now. And I'm going to grab some more filament tape and I'm going to just one is really all what's needed make sure again that it's all nice and you don't have to compress it as well just lie it there it's gonna be pretty sticky just like so and that's gonna secure the disc to the sword quite nicely like that. All right, so I put the uh, sword down on the table. Now I did kind of just bump it up here just so that I don't have the sticky part sticking right to the table and getting all dirty. These are the two blades that I've already cut out. What I'm going to do is I'm going to find where the cap is, which is right about here. And I've already just cut out that little notch where that cap goes. So I'm just going to lie it as dead center as I can right on there like so. should stick and flip it over and same thing with this side match it up dead center just like that and that will match it up make sure it sticks and yeah this stuff is really sticky so it should stay right where you put it Now I'm also going to put on those two pieces just to make it go to the to my handle. Just bump it right up to it, like so. And same with that other piece on this side. Dead center, perfect. Just like that. And there you have it. So far. All right, so we're gonna put some uh, more double-sided tape down on the side of this now so that we can attach uh, foam to sit up on the side. So we wanna come down the thrusting tip to about here. We're gonna be sanding some of this off to get more of a sword shape out of it. So we, we don't wanna run the tape right down to the end and make a big mucky mess out of that if we can. Plus we're gonna bind this up with hockey tape and lots of other stuff afterwards. So we get down here just so we're getting a, a good bond between the uh, the thrusting tip and the 
structure and the blade edges and the side of the blade edge were good there and then we just run it down to the handle on the other side. got one try when you're putting this tape onto itself because it's very sticky so line it up twice before you let it touch anywhere See that there where this this end that's not bound down by the the tape want to come up in my hand so you just got to make sure that you're keeping everything nice and straight and bond it in there because if you if you if it starts to pull up one way it's really hard to pull it back the other way with with whatever tape you got so just try and keep everything as straight as you can Scoot. Now we're getting the other side. It's a little easier because we got the uh, the cover on there still. So that's not going to want to stick to everything like it's been doing so far. You want to be careful of this is a pain in the butt. Stuff really sticks to itself well, <laughs> which is why you don't want to touch it down on the, the, the core. So we can, we can work with this, but you wouldn't want to have to try and pull all that apart again to fix a uh, over early tape touch. So I'll have to get another piece in there because my lineup is just a little bit off. So we'll put a second piece down over top of that to make sure this is getting grabbed up. Okay, so we're going to uh, expand our taped area out to the edge. And then we'll get our blue uh, cam mat foam pressed down on top of that. And uh, we want to bring this double-sided edging right fairly close to the edge here. Um, because we're going to be running this through the belt sander and it has an opportunity to pull itself apart there. So make things secure as possible. We've got, uh, we've got our puzzle mat down there and we're all double sided taped up. And we have our camp mat and we're going to put that down over the side. I prefer this, I don't know if you'll be able to see that, but there's a little bit of a bubble texture there. This is a little bit heavier. There's another type of this blue camp mat that's a lighter blue, and this is smooth, and it, it just almost immediately turns into dust when you put it under the stresses that we do. So this is the, the good lighter foam, and uh, this is your good heavier foam. You want to lay that down with just a little bit of stretch to it. Just give it a little pull so it comes in nice. And then try and work your way up the core so that you don't push the edge down and then have a bubble where it's not making contact with, the, with your tape. So you just want to get down to your core off the middle and then work your way out. Get yourself a nice foam sandwich. Okay, so there's our foam sandwich. We've got our more striking edge down the middle. 
we've got our eh, reasonable edge but uh, this is more just decorative and get a little courtesy foam over that core down the side piece in place our tip is still a little bit loose here because like I said we don't want to get too much tape into that because we are going to shape this off probably something about like that to get us a little sword shape on the end and then we'll angle the sides in here too so let's just get to that shall we belt sander on foam you want to go nice and slow and you don't want to push in as soon as you push in and the foam starts to compress against it it'll grab the whole thing and, and just destroy it immediately so you want a nice clean new belt uh, not full of wood and metal and stuff uh, or worn down and you just want to ease back and forth and go nice and slow and just take your time about about taking that foam off because it chews it up pretty good but especially when you've got it turned over like this and you're trying to get your shaping in there, it'll want to pull it down in with it. So things to be aware of. Or uh, if, you know, if you don't have a belt sander, you can just uh, take your time with uh, the old razor knife. If you've got one like this that's got a little bit of serration on the edge, it actually helps quite a bit with, uh, with, with uh, getting the angles cut nicely and consistently. The straight ones just tend to want to grab on and pull sometimes. So you can do it with either. It just takes a little bit more, a little bit more effort, steady hand. this down the side on the sander you want to be in a, in a nice and good controlled spot so just do a couple inches come off shuffle readjust and then come off and shuffle readjust if you try to come from back here when you get up to here you won't have any power it'll pull it right into the belt and uh, also if you try to just start up here and cut off you, you can cut it for a while and you'll have foam on both sides splitting it but eventually it's going to grab and pull it into the belt and wreck your project again. So just go nice and slow, ease it on down the line, give yourself some marks to go by and uh, you'll be able to get a pretty good shape. You don't have to shape this perfectly because we're going to, we're going to wrap this whole thing in hockey tape to bind it all together and give us a good hold on things. But this gives us a better uh, shape, just a better profile. When we get our shinier duct tape on there, you'll be able to see those those turnovers and everything's not just round. Alright so yep yeah, hockey tape time. Uh, this is just standard hockey tape and get at any sports store. We're gonna start pretty far into the blade right here. We're gonna again try to keep things nice and flat. You don't want it to be bunching up too much. Now when you get to the tip Again, sorry, let's see if you can get the tip here. If you get the tip, you want to make sure everything is nice and tight. And you want to kind of follow where the tape wants to go. Just like so. And even if you need to kind of cut it off, you can. But try to keep everything nice and tight. And again, follow it down. Even when you get to about here. You don't want to, again, pull too much. Because once you start pulling and compressing, then you start compressing it. But cut it here. Start another piece, and you just go over the entire tip, the whole entire thing. Alright, so I have hockey taped 
uh, the tip of it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take uh, just the roll of hockey tape here and I'm just going to go completely around this thing. Now what you have to be very careful of, let me just find the edge of this tape here. It's probably going to be a hard part on this video. <laughs> but once you start it, what you have to be careful of is when you're going around and you need more tape, what you don't want to do is start to pull it and torque it. Because once you start to do, you start to take that edge out of alignment, all right? So you just want to take it up and just lightly put it over like so. Stick it down. And if you need more, hold it down, take it off a little bit, and then again, lightly put it over it and then stick it down. And that way you're just not pulling the edge out of alignment there. Then you're going to start at the tip, go all the way around, and just make a big hockey tape sock over your blade. All right, so here we are doing the same process with the uh, fiberglass. We're getting our, our harder edged foam down there, touched in nicely and uh, away from the tip a little bit so that we don't get too gunked up when we shape it up. And uh, we already got the other side on there, so we'll get another piece up here. And uh, same on this side, and then we'll get the uh, blue foam on like we have on the other weapon as well. We, we, we technically could leave the core open on the side by the rule book, but you end up with a, a little nicer uh, uh, presentation. It's probably a little bit heavier, but it's a little bit more solid, might last a little bit longer. There's a, there's a million ways to build these things, but that's when you're doing it this way, the side piece actually, I think, works out a little bit better. It's a stronger uh, weapon in the end. All right, so I have my sword completely hockey taped all the way around. It's looking all nice. Uh, next piece I'm going to work on is the guard. Now, there are multiple types of guards that you can put on this thing. I'm just going to put something simple. Uh, I measured out a guard. It's just going to come off just a few inches off of the blade here. So I just made myself a rectangle, put a hole through it, and I put a bunch of hockey tape on this so it's all ready to go. And it just goes through here, like so. Line it up, and it's going to fit just like that. And, uh, and that's going to work as my guard. I'm just going to tape this into place. Okay, so we're... Uh... We're going to give ourselves a little bit better than just a straight round handle here. Get a little definition on the sides so that when you pick your weapon up, you can tell where your, your edge alignment is right out of the gate. The way that we're going to do that is we've got a section of a uh, half inch pipe here. That's uh, just the length of the handle that we want. We're going to split that down the middle and we're going to attach each half to give that handle a little bit more depth. All right, so I put some double sided tape on uh, the handle. Now I have the the split PVC. I'm going to line that up with my edge. Just make sure that it is nice and I'm just going to stick it on one side like so. Again match up that edge. Stick it on like that. Squish it together. The double sided tape should hold it into place. That way now when I hold it, I now know exactly where my edges are. So I'm just going to take some hockey tape and I'm going to go completely around that, which should make my handle. Alright, so I'm just going to take some double sided tape, put it on the end, just like so. Peel that off. Of course peeling this off on video again is impossible. That's what the editing's for. <laughs> All right, so the tape is on. I got another piece of foam that I've cut out previously. It's just going to go on this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that other double-sided uh, tape. I'm going to put it around the edge here. I'm going to take some blue foam. And I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to stick it to it around like that. All right, so here's the pummel now. I have foam on this end. Uh, I put the double-sided tape around. I got some blue tape or blue foam around here for the pummel. Now I'm just gonna get some hockey tape, hockey tape it all up. All right, so I have hockey taped up the pummel here. Now, as I uh, showed you, there's only one 
layer of foam on here just because we should have this foam uh, padded, but this is not a striking uh, pummel. If you do have, want to have a striking pummel, again, it has to be capped with that inch and a half of uh, foam. But this one, just because uh, both the sides do have to be padded, this is just padded. You cannot strike with this pummel. So, this is the blade. The last thing I have to do is grab some uh, duct tape. I'm going to go over the side of the blade first, and then I'm going to do the edges second. Uh, and I'm just going to go big stripes around that way and that way to make sure that everything is all covered. So there you go. The blade has now been fully duct taped. Uh, you want to try to keep it as flat and as nice without any wrinkles. I got a few in there. I'll probably take those out in a little bit. But there you have a finished sword. From the pummel, handle, guard, and the blade. Um, so this one here, there is a bit of weight to it. Um, I did give my handle a little extra, just if I do want to use it two-handed, I can. Um, but uh, this is a, a nice straight blade, and it will be good. Uh, and we'll continue on with the uh, the handle of the fiberglass cord, just a little bit. All right, so we're working on the handle for the uh, fiberglass sword, which is quite a bit trickier. And we're going to use uh, a zinc... Uh, counterweight in the pummel to uh, give the weapon closer to its uh, steel counterpart's weight and a little better balance point than, than having the heavier foam blade out on the end. So that's what this is. So we've got our fiberglass core here. We've got some PVC marked out for our, our uh, pummel to sit on. That's going to slide over top of here. We'll have our pummel mounted on here little cap on the back to do a little little foam on um, and we're also going to have to uh, pin this through the PVC through the fiberglass core out the other side and then shave it down so with the metal pin and the metal counterweight that means that this weapon won't be uh, legally admissible at medieval chaos but it is uh, absolutely 100% fine for a wolf at our fighting so let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so we uh, ground down the inside of our, or the outside of our handle a little bit, just get rid of some material so that we're getting a good fit here. Now we're just going to test fit this, just to make sure everything's working out. We're not in it, because we're going to have to heat flatten out that handle. We don't want, uh, we don't want too much odd additional stresses in any spots. Alright, so we got our uh, pummel on there and we're trimmed up so our last little cap piece is going to fit on. Now we got to uh, heat this up and flatten this down so that it's uh, going to fit over that bit of rod that we got inside there. we we'll flatten it out on the sides and then we'll inject some glue and pin it in place. So we, uh, we laid our stuff out here and we drilled our holes through the uh, handle and through the rod. Now we just got some uh, Gorilla Glue down the hole. We'll get a little Gorilla Glue on this pin here. And 
And just like when you're gluing any tight space here, you're just gonna work it through there a couple times, give it some twists, give everything a chance. We, we pretty much shot it right through there with the uh, with the bottle, but uh, we want to wind it through there, give it a good chance to get onto everything. Just uh, give that a minute to dry up. We'll grind uh, grind the sides off and keep heating and flattening our handle down. And uh, we're almost done. got our, our handle on and in position here and uh, we've got our metal pins through and uh, sanded down so they're flush and uh, we just have to drill a couple of holes in the end here push some construction glue through from end to end so we fill up that void space and it'll give us a nice solid uh, uh, interior without uh, too much flex in it so we're just going to drill a couple of holes in it for that then we'll split another half piece, just like we did with the other handle. Mount either of those on either side, because this this turns out this is a little too small for my hand, so we're just going to beef it up a little bit, and uh, then we'll get the cap on the end. Alright, so we needed uh, all hands on deck to make this part work. So uh, you can see what we've done there is we drilled into the top and the bottom of the handle and we also came in through the bottom. So we started at the bottom, we put construction glue around the rod and we worked it through till we could see it coming out of these holes. Then we put a little extra into the cap, pushed that down and, and the pressure wave of the glue coming through gives you an extra ejection out of these two holes. Then you know you're nice and solidly filled there up to the core. Then you put your glue uh, cartridge over top of this one. You push in till you see it in this one. You move up. You push down. You fire glue through here. You'll see a little blow back there till you catch up here. You make your way down. You make your way down. And then you just uh, wipe up your extra stuff. Get some double sided carpet tape on there. Put your two extra pieces on. And we're almost done. So we got our two-sided tape on there. We just want to get our handle pieces lined up nicely. So we're going to get good edge alignment once this handle's in position. closure when I come around on that a little bit extra tape and we'll be right where we right where we want it to be okay so whenever you're using bolts on your shields or metal in your swords or anything like that the primary concern when you're finished your product is that there's absolutely no way for any bolts poking out past nuts to 
hook onto an opponent or have them bang their head off of it or, or to snag them or drag it. The very least scrape them, possibly cut them wide open. So we, uh, we make a couple of little void fillers here and we want to get in around the sides of this nut and fill up this space here as well. Or the nut's actually embedded down in there but you can't take the bolt off right with it. So what we want to do is get right in there, fill that whole space up. Being difficult. It's not the easiest thing to do, but you only need to do it once to fill up that space. Then you can get some more layers on top and create a nice little armored block there to uh, keep. I, I mean, it's ground off flush. This is just more of an extra safety measure just to keep that uh, top side away from where it could potentially catch somebody. It's unlikely, but unlikely things happen in this sport. And then on the other side, you've got the bolt head back in there, so we're just filling up the void with a piece that's not really gonna catch anybody, but fill it up and the tape looks nice and smooth on there. Okay, so this is a fairly advanced handle. And uh, if you wanted to do a simpler version that would be legal out at MC, you could uh, foam up, get some double-sided carpet tape on your handle, get foam on both sides, take a PVC pipe, cut it to length, split it down the middle. Once you've got your, uh, your foam on there nice and bound on, then you can put that split pipe on both sides just like we did with the other one. You can cap the end uh, with one of these caps taped up and on there uh, and then sheet the whole thing in tape and then hockey tape it up, hockey tape it up to get your handle. The difference will be this, that the blade's going to be, its balance point is going to be way out here, right? It's going to feel a lot heavier at the end comparatively to this handle, but this one will work at MC. This is an R only. Alright, so here we are putting our finishing touch on the outside now. So with these uh, homemade wider bladed foam ones, put two strips down the side to get good coverage. If it's a Kalamasil redo, you can go away with one, but on these wider ones, you use two. You just gotta be, get it kinda close to the edge. It doesn't have to be exactly perfect because we're gonna come around the outside for the piece here as well. So the side ones are easy. This one's a little trickier. I like to come the length of it and then about a little less than a third of the way back again. You wrap right around the, the tip there. So the way I tackle this is uh, by hanging the tape and then just lining my sword up on it. So I get just a little bit of contact up here right in the middle. And I turn it around. Tip up there, back to touch, smooth this side out just so it's got good contact with the, the blade, doesn't want to pull off. And flip it over, just come down. I find if you put your the end of your finger right where you want the side of the blade to touch, that's the easiest way to get things nice and straight. Then something sharp so you don't uh, you can do this with scissors if they're not all gummed up like my other ones there but at each corner of the tip 
just cut it like that. And then I like to get the, uh, the long side underneath. You want to do this so that you get another least amount of those wrinkles that you can. Uh, you'll probably get some in there. So we do the sides first. You got to be careful that you don't, because uh, you got tape sticking out the, the other side still, you got to be careful not to reach around there and bend it down. Then I like to fold the, the tip up bring these two pieces down so it catches there. So if you're thrusting, you're not going to catch the, the lip of this side because this is over top. And then same thing now on the end, everything should just slide back off the top real nice. All right, so we got both of our swords finished. There's our fiberglass core. That's balance points coming in about right there, which is what the, the zinc pommel does for you. Gets gets things a little bit more balanced. The foam one, which is uh, still a good sword, it's, it's a balance point is just a little bit more forward than the, the metal pommel, but such is the nature of foam weaponry. And now we're going to weigh these things up and see what we got for weight. just a shade under two pounds on the fiberglass core one which is pretty close to what a steel weapon of that size would be and one pound eight ounces on the straight foam sword so pretty decent So there you go, two, two different types of foam weapons. This one's 100% MC legal, this one's Ulf Ednar legal, and uh, with a different handle on it, this could also be legal at MC as well.